One of the single most important things to do when you're dealing with somebody that is, you know, they're experiencing some kind of pain, they've had some kind of trauma in the distant past, is, okay, so what is it you feel that you don't want anymore? Oh, well, I feel, I feel anxiety. Okay, you feel anxiety. When was the first time that you can remember feeling that way before? Oh, well, uh, or, or, you know, I, I can't remember. Okay, well, when was the last time? Oh, then. Okay, tell me about that experience. Tell me, what were you seeing? What were you feeling? What was going on? Um, they will, nine times out of ten, they will start with a narrative about the experience instead of actually describing the experience. After they're done, get them into the experience. Get them to relive the experience to some degree, enough that they reconnect with the memory. And then you can ask them what else they saw, what else they felt, and see if there's any other emotions associated with it. And then ask, is, is there another time when you felt like that? Oh yeah, well, this time. And you can keep doing that, and doing that, and doing that, going back, and back, and back, until you get to the point when there's an aha moment, and they go, oh yeah, there's this time when I was like five when such and such happened. Tell me about that. And they tell you about it. And you ask them, what could you have done differently? What can you do differently now that you're there, in this moment, there? It's called reframing. And um, with the highly analytical people, it's not very easy. You say, what can you do differently? It's like, nothing. It's in the past. Well. Imagine that it's happening right now. What could you do differently that you're there right now? That's how you deal with the, the analytical people that, that are aware of the fact that they're in the past and that you can't change the past. You just say, pretend it's happening now, and you're there, and you're five. What could you do differently than you actually did? And you say, well, I could do this. Okay, imagine that. Imagine yourself doing that. And you say, okay, and they imagine doing it. It changes everything. You've got the old memory. I mean, yeah, generally speaking, the individual knows what really happened. Although, if you were to go back in time and you were to go to that same moment in time, but you relive it differently every time, <laughs> they would eventually get to the point where, you know, I'm not positive which one is the one that really happened and which one, the one that I think really happened, I don't know if that's real or if that's one of my fantasies. I don't know. You can actually get to that point because the experience of reliving a memory is a memory in its own right. And the two are stored in practically the same place because of their similarity and it can get confusing. And what ends up happening is the emotional baggage attached to that memory gets relieved when you re-experience it. It's called reframing. So you take somebody back uh, in, in what's called an affect bridge, you go back in time to just one step at a time. It, you know, theoretically, if you were to, when did you f when did you feel that pain? Well, when did when was the earliest time you'd felt that in the past? You know, it, there could be many many links in this chain back to the original source, but you want to get to the earliest that they can get to. And if you've got them into a nice and good hypnotic state when, before you begin this process, it goes so much smoother. Once you get there, though, you can reframe that past experience, re-experience it as something new. And in so doing, change how they feel about it. Give it a try sometime. Thank you.